to the Upholstery Show, live from Arlington, Massachusetts. We're going to serve you up a beautiful bowl of coconut fiber. Really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> you on, Dad? Hey, welcome to another question and answer. We're just laughing over at Patrick's intro, and uh, Jimmy, we understand, is watching live. Hello, Jimmy. Uh, hey, Erica. Erica. And Erica, Jimmy's our diva in waiting. I say that because today was supposed to be his first day of class, but we got so much, so many things came in, and it's the shop is in disarray that we need to get ready for Jimmy because he's he's got certain demands. One of them is that the shop has to be clean, and there's nothing underfoot. Uh, so anyhow, so before I get really moving on the questions this week and. Uh, Always, as always, your live questions and comments uh, take precedent over everything that we do. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the new class that, that just went up yesterday, right, Patrick? Yeah, well, te yesterday, it was supposed to be today, but I just wanted to get it out of the way. So it did go up last so yesterday. So anybody who little... missed out, it's up now. So we already heard from a couple of uh, people who are, who are yearly subscribers who are really looking forward to that class. And they're just people who subscribe yearly, I think, get the best bet, don't you, Patrick? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just getting more and more content. Every new class they get automatically within that year. So. I know Erica has that, so Erica, make sure you check that out. Yeah, Erica, that, we, we think that's one of the best classes, I think, the, the most in-depth class. You know, we get a comment. You know, we take on negative comments, too. Nobody's perfect. Um, somebody commented uh, on YouTube about how some of the videos that I've done seem to be incomplete. And, and you, know, um, you know, that perception could be... Uh, it could be some of the earlier ones too, uh, but yeah, you know, I, I, I take that at criticism, um, you know, and I, I will say that it's because we started the online classes. That's why we started the online classes because you know, for ten years we did these free videos. They were pretty much public service, but and, and realizing that uh, you know the content can't be there. Although you know, we've heard from people who have just taken the YouTube videos. We have almost what two hundred of them, Patrick. Yeah. And, and have become upholsterers using the videos. And I, that was never the intent of the YouTube videos, folks, really. It was to provide short videos uh, of different procedures. And sure, some aren't finished because we're, we're showing a certain point, a certain, a certain procedure in the chair. I mean, it would be like offering um, you know, a doctor, oh, thank God they don't do this, <laughs> offering, offering how to operate in the human body and just showing the foot. And they can't show the whole body. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but... There's so much to learn, you know, there's no way, you know, that um, you can learn it all. Um, I think the online classes do provide that, and if you get the broad, the uh, broadwayupholsteryschool.com, the diamond tufting classes all by itself, I think there's value there. But every, every segment, every, every segment, and Jimmy can tell you if he wants to make a comment, the, the person who's taken the class are the ones that are, that are, that are really the insightful ones. They're the ones, the inquisitive ones. They come to you. Even Jimmy. Even Jimmy. Even <laughs> Jimmy. Uh, you know. <laughs> we'll ask those questions and every once in a while I'll look at the camera and say this is what you don't get. This is what you don't get on YouTube. The pres most presenters on YouTube um, are hopefully are, are really you know advanced in their craft uh, and they're, they're forgetting a lot of the things that they've learned, and that's the, that's the biggest problem. So when I have somebody with me, like Jimmy or Michelle, um, and they're asking those questions, and, I've, and you know, it brings back the memory of that, you know, that procedure or whatever that needs to be taught. So, I don't know, long story, but anyway. Say hello to John and Anne-Marie from Ireland. Hey, John, Anne-Marie from Ireland. I wonder if she knows uh, other well, friends. the same John that's, that's, that's been here uh, they watch a, a lot. Oh, John and yes. Anne Marie from yes. Ireland. Yeah. yeah, we say hello, you guys. Uh, as you know, we have relatives in Dublin, and we get over there once in a while. We were over there three years ago. We would like, love to go again, right, Pat? Yeah, of course. That was a once lot of fun. Once this is over. Yeah, travel. I mean, we miss traveling, don't we, you guys, with all this stuff that's going on, anyhow? So uh, we Pam's talked. Here. Hello. Hi, Pam. So we talked about. Oh, but Pam had. Who was it that had that? Difficulty with the striped chair pattern was that Pam? One of uh, either her or Terry, I forget. One of our one of our students was really having a hard time with the with the chair that had a striped fabric that I answered in an email. I'm not sure if Patrick has it in our questions. And today, Michaela is going to read me the questions when we get to that because our computer, our printers on the on yeah, the fridge, yeah, 
ran out of ink, and I went to three places to try to find the ink. Couldn't find it anywhere. We all, we all know that you're old school, though. You, you stick to paper. You don't use these phones. Well, anything. I know. I, I can't see on the phone. That's the problem. <laughs> get older, you know. Anyhow, so before we get going on the, on the questions that we have, and also your questions, um, I want to talk about this project that came in. I, I, I had a, a customer call me. She said she had three sticklies, originally stickly uh, pieces of furniture. And she was talking about how they were finished. It sounded to me like um, they didn't have the original, you know, drop-in units. And, and indeed, she was talking about that they had put wood on the base and then just made a loose cushion. And I'm thinking, oh, no. And I, I said, you, do you have the original drop-in units? It's, it's like everything on these pieces. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I'll look. And then sure enough, she found the three of them. So there's a love seat and there's two of these chairs. And I have to tell you, it looks like they're really in rough shape, but I was so happy that she had them. So what I want to do at some point after we get through our questions, I want to start peeling away all the layers of materials they have on here to see what I, I, uh, I'm in store for. Because I'm definitely, if you've watched the videos, you know that I love restoring furniture, not replacing it. Um, so I'm going to uh, look forward to get in there to see what's, what's going on. So we'll do that later. But right now... Um, unless there's other business, Patrick, that you wanted me to talk about, we should get to the just questions. Just Michelle's class. Um, just Michelle's class. The Broadway Upholstery School Forum keeps getting more and more people. I think we've got, I, you know, and if I miss somebody, sometimes we miss somebody that wants to join. Please forgive us. Just keep keep bugging us. Yeah, Jimmy's been helping out with that. He's doing yeah, I want a, a, shout, a shout out to Jimmy because Jimmy's, uh, you know, he'll even give me a little bit of a prompt, you know, saying, hey, you know, Kevin, you want, what, what about you? What do you think about this? You know, to, just to remind me because we are busy. I mean, we, we have the upholstery school online. We have the, the custom work. We have now cushions that we're offering. Uh, cushions are starting to get uh, busier and busier. So there's a lot going on here at the shop. Um, I think that the economy finally has, I hope this is true for all of our friends out there. I mean, we're in the Northeast, uh, but um, we think that it's picking up, which is good. It's a good sign. So, let's uh, start, I have a good idea. Let's start. Jimmy submitted a question to the forum, and I have that one here. I'll read it for you. Let's start with Jimmy. Oh, let's start that with Jimmy. good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so he says... I'd like to know how much pressure should the air compressor be when you're using the air gun. Is he talking about blood pressure or is he talking about his I own? I both. I don't know. Jimmy, the, I think what you, you're looking at about a one now. <laughs> you think both? Both. I'm getting angry when he's starting to use the air gun. Is he putting angry faces on the on his on his red face? If, if he bought our staple gun, he would be having this problem. I don't know. Well, you know what it is. It's true. If he bought a low-pressure staple gun from us, which we highly recommend, and if he's going out to the Home Depot and, and getting himself some guns, he's 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 in a he's in a bad way. We're going to have to talk to him about that. But anyhow, 80 pounds is the answer. 80 psi psi is the answer. That's about what you want. If you have too much over that, let's say you go 90 or 100, you can actually blow your staples through some fabric. If you go under 80, you're going to find um, on um, not a low pressure gun, but on most guns, when you start getting below the cycle of 80 pounds, let's say 70, even if you set your compressor at 80, and you have to set it at 80, you don't want to be above 80. So this is the problem. So once the cycle starts to cycle down or the air starts to leave your compressor before it kicks on, so sometimes you get down to 70 and 65 PSI, and then you go to use your gun, and it jams. And it jams because it's not a low-pressure gun. It's not a good gun. And the first time it jams, it's a problem because sometimes it jams worse than other times. You have to take, let me just show you, on, on some inferior guns. You, uh, you guys have probably all have done this on inferior guns. You open up your slide, and then your hammer is stuck in this position. I don't know if you can see this. It's stuck up the top. And there might be a little stub of a staple that you see in there because it didn't perform on that low cycle. So you have to go take the hammer. You might want to take your gun apart, which would probably be the smart thing. But usually if you're busy, I mean, you know, what, I, what I used to do, believe it or not, you guys, this gun is the low-pressure gun. I have no problems with this jamming. None at all because it's a low-pressure low gun, a low-cycle gun. So... So when you, when you have an inferior gun and it gets stuck, you go in there with the needle, like your regulator, open it up and take the stub out. And 
close it back up. You know, that happens a few times. Your gun starts to, your, your hammer starts to bend, and then, you, and then you have a gun that you can't use. So instead of purchasing three and four guns at Home Depot before you realize your mistake, Get the good gun first. You go on to BroadwayPolsterySchool.com. I hate it. I'm not a salesman, really. You guys you know that, but but that gun, all the materials on there are pretty much certified by me. Somebody that's been doing this for so long, I do it in my sleep, right? I know all the right things to do and all the and and avoid the. I'm trying to get you guys to avoid the wrong, buying the wrong materials and and, a, and upholstering in a way that's that's going to get you in trouble. So, and we love giving advice. So. Does Jimmy have, is that answer Jimmy's question, Patrick? Yeah. Okay. So he wants to know if this is Kevin's comedy hour. Kevin's comedy hour? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, Jimmy, next week, that's Jimmy. Jimmy will be live with us right next week if he wants to be, right, Patrick? Sure. I don't know if that's written in his contract, though. I, I, he, I know that he wanted, for us. he wanted his uh, a quart of Diet Coke, two Hershey bars. A roll of uh, paper towels. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but <laughs> give him an apple. That's a, uh, and, a and an apple. Did you say? Yeah, an apple. I mean, on Halloween, when you go trick or treat, there's always that one person that gives out apples. That's right. <laughs> I bet, uh, Jimmy, you didn't give out apples when you. You don't give out apples at Halloween, do you? I hope not. Hope they're candy apples if he does. But anyhow, um, I think we're ready to do, we've got to catch up now, Pat. Yeah, we have a lot of questions, and thanks lot, guys for submitting a lot of good questions and, over, the, over the last week. And there are people probably waiting, so we'll, we'll go ahead right now and start. Um, sorry, but there might be a little bit of a delay because uh, Michaela has to read them, and I have to answer. This is from Jessica. Hi, I have a question about some chairs I recently purchased for our kitchen table. The chairs I recently purchased need need reupholstered the seat and the back. However, when I'm sitting in them, the way they are at the table, they te they seem too short. Will reupholstering make them make up the two to three inch difference that I need to make them more comfortable sitting at the table? It's a really good question. So what I would do first is go low impact to find this out. So you might want to take one. The backs are not the problem. It's the seat. So you might want to take one apart to see if there's something going on inside the seat. Um, usually, um, when you if it's webbed and the webbing is let loose and then you re-web it, you can actually bring up the shoulder or the whole body up about an inch and a half. And then with foam, you can add you can add thickness of foam and new foam. But be careful doing that because aesthetically you don't want to throw you know the scale of the piece off. And and this is very important. I see. A lot of the newer manufactured stuff, the form is it's just, I see it right away. It's so, it's off. The, the older furniture, like the mid-century furniture, um, it, it was engineered and designed really properly. So I pay strict attention to that. Um, so you have to compromise sometimes. So instead of being two and three inches up, maybe an inch and a half or two inches at the most is going to be enough. Do you follow me? It's a good question. So. Get inside that chair to see what's going on first, and if you do a low impact rewebbing and reusing the foam, if you want, that might be enough. Try not to um, maybe uh, change it too much. You know the style. So that's my answer. To the next one. Um, this is by. I you gotta bring me a. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a uh, complicated username. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Let's just say that JC. <laughs> or IC, I don't know what that first, <laughs> the J or an I. Alright, this question says, Hi, your video has helped me a lot while I upholstered an antique chair. Uh, Louis, what is that, Pat? Louis, what's XVI? XVI. XVI. What number is that? Then? Sixteen. Louis is sixteen. They are too old and had been upholstered seven, <laughs> <Here> several <you laughs> times since the frame has had a lot of damage from from the staples used before. I noticed that when I stapled some were so loose they wouldn't stay in place. What can yeah. I do in those cases? Sometimes furniture gets so old that you know you can't. 
you can't do anything with it, it becomes more of a museum piece. I, I have a, for instance, I remember a couple of rocking chairs that came my way, and I was really excited. The customer called me. She lived in a very old community here in New England, and the house was from the 1700s. As a matter of fact, the house that she lived in, um, the, where these chairs came from, they were in the family for generations. The house, they had done a renovation, and there was a false wall, and behind the false wall was a room full, uh, it was like an armory full of muskets from the Revolutionary War. Do you believe that? Uh, I mean, hundreds of muskets. They were, they were expecting a bigger war, I guess, especially in this area. But can you imagine the value of all those muskets? But anyhow, um, they had these two chairs that would literally, they were so brittle, they were actually just kind of falling apart in my hands. And I, I just can't do anything with them. Um, so I had to, it was the first time I can remember where I actually had to return something that I or my expert wood guy couldn't do anything with them. You know, they were just too far gone. So I hate to say it, you know, some, sometimes furniture does reach the end of its life. Now, if it's not at that point, like these two rockers, have your wood guy come in and, and um, you know, it's going to be expensive for the, for the client, but maybe they'll put the money into it. Have, have an expert look at it, you know. Um, we as upholsterers can glue frames and we can put a little stain here and there, but most upholsterers that I know, including myself, I call it, we're not, we're not master woodcraft people at all. I, I wouldn't call myself that by any stretch of the imagination. So take it to the expert, see what he says. And then if he can repair it and your customer agrees, sounds like you're at, you're at that point with these chairs. So even going to a half inch staple is not going to work. You know, you got three size staples. Um, so check it out, see what you can do with your woodworker. So the next one? We have a live question. Live? From Erica. Okay, you're going to have to read those. Gotcha. Okay, so, Kevin, do you have a video or some advice on the order to take apart a sofa? I'm about to start work on the sofa you, my, you did my video for. Um, we have, um, did we on that tufted sofa, Patrick, what, did we strip that apart or was that just reupholstery? Do you remember? You mean tufted Michelle's chair? No, no, the, uh, the one on YouTube. Uh, the one with the, the... Oh, the big one. Yeah. I don't think you... I think you just... You didn't have it for long enough. I think that if Erica knows the library pretty well, she's probably gone through the library for sofas, and maybe maybe we don't have uh, stripping... Wait a minute. How about that Furniture Salvation, Patrick? That has it. Does it? Yeah, the the, the one we just did, the the blue velvet one. Yeah. The, which episode would that have been in? At the very know? first one. The very first one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Didn't we go right through A to Z on that? I showed you working, so that'd be, that would have been update number one. Right, so right. tell her so to check that. Check that out. If you still have questions, send, send us an email. But keep in mind, too, even if you see a chair being, re it's, you're reversing the upholstery process pretty much. So if you see it, even a chair is going to give you an idea how to take a sofa. It doesn't have to be a sofa de in demonstration. It could be a chair. I mean, because I can tell you that it's usually on, on the average piece of furniture, it's the cambric. It's the outside back, the outside arms, the inside, the, the seat, the inside arms, the inside back. However, if you've watched some of my videos, if your piece isn't, uh, and you have Erica, doesn't need restoration, you don't want to be tearing all the insides off. You're just loosening the insides, and then you're upholstering as you go. And, and I think, Patrick, um, th it's definitely, th we've done so many now, it's, it's hard for us to just instantly recall, right, Patrick? Yeah, yeah. But check out, uh, keep going through the library on, on the YouTube, too, to, to see. You'll, you'll get a good idea. And if not, like I said, email you, and you, you can do a better job describing that, maybe. Yeah. Over an email or something. You send pictures, maybe. Yeah. But, you know, we did have that comment about, uh, I'll, I'll go back to that comment about how the, some people were saying, uh, some one person was saying how you know, there were some incomplete videos. But that's, again, that's why we've done the online classes and Erica is a member right Patrick? Yeah. So so those online classes too I think Jimmy took Turl Pitt a chair pot didn't he in the one the first one he did? Was it the Arts and Crafts chair? Yeah I think so. Yeah I think that was it. Yeah. Something just fell over there I think it might be that ghost from the story I told last Is Daniel week. here? I don't think Daniel's uh, here. <laughs> he liked that one. <laughs> Alright so with the next question uh, Jimmy says, excellent job, Kevin, as usual. Such talent. Excellent, Jimmy. The check is in the mail. I think we're getting $10 for every compliment. 
Uh, royalty checks. Yeah. Is that what we're up on royalty, Pat, for every compliment that Jimmy gives? I think it's $10. I think it's like more like point. I don't even know. So hey, far. Penny. So hey, far. Hey, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> so far, he owes me. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy, though. I don't know why I can't be serious with Jimmy. I don't know. And we have another question. Next one is from Mona. Hi, Mona. No, Mona, this is a YouTube question. A YouTube question. Yeah, it's a, pre a, a previous question. They're all YouTube questions. But. Okay. Yeah, it says, uh, I just started and didn't have a sewing machine, so instead of piping, I folded fabric and glued it on. Is that something, is it something what is used already or just created some new style? She created, I think she's using her ingenuity, you know, and I think about what she, what she's saying there. When upholstery first started, they didn't even have sewing machines, I don't think. You know, and you see a lot of the older, older furniture, it's just their upholstered seats, upholstered backs and nails, you know, decorative nails and things like that. So um, the introduction of a sewing machine gives us cushions and double piping and, and single piping and top stitch baseball stitching and all that stuff. Um, so that the, she's, she's come up with something creative. I, I love it. I think if you can be resourceful like that and it works, I would be advised, I would advise you to make sure if you're going to do something like that to make sure that the glue is a, is a, a proper glue. There's, we have the glue up, right, Patrick? Yeah. The proper glue stick, and the especially the proper. I'm looking for my my gun. I'm looking for my glue gun. So we talked about this in other shows. It's so important because one thing like this, you guys, even if you're a professional, and you have a gun that's not performing, you think that the glue is going on, but it's not hot. You know these glue guns do have a life. You know, and they get they get weak, and when they get weak, the glue doesn't heat up, and then you go do a whole job, and you find out that you know the double piping is coming off in areas, and and that's a problem. But one of the biggest things is those arts and crafts um, guns are, are really no good. They're not hot enough. They only have one setting, I think, and they're not hot. So if you have a professional gun, and you have two settings, high and low. I have it taped to the high one because the low one doesn't work. It doesn't work the way I want it to. Now the flip side to that is that, that glue comes out really hot. So make sure you protect yourself. If you get any glue on your fingers, make sure it comes off right away. Um, but if you're doing that procedure that Mona was just talking about, make sure that you have the proper equipment. And I think you can get away with it. But then, you know, invest in a machine. They're the best. I had my mechanic in here the other day, and he was talking about this machine I have. This is a Juki DDL5550N. It's a student machine, um, but it's great for professionals, too. It's simple. That's why I like about it. It has a reverse. It's not a walking foot, but it does most of, you see it, it's in the shop, so it does most of my procedures. It's easy to use. It's easy to learn on. Um, and it's, I won't say it's maintenance free, but it's close to it. Well, you just found that out recently. <laughs> but yeah, we were just sewing and all of a sudden there was this big, what would you describe it as, Pat? Not a bang, but it was like... It was like an explosion of sorts. Yeah, uh, so, it was very weird. So what had happened was the cord, uh, which somehow was touching the fan belt of the machine, and it wore through, and it wore through. Then it came into contact with the metal portion of the machine, and thank God I'm still here. <laughs> um, because it really, it really made a noise, a popping noise, I guess. And then it's a little smoke, right, Patrick? Yeah, it's very weird. And then, uh, so he had to come in to fix that. But that was a fluke. Otherwise, the machine's working great. So we have another question. Uh, this is from Susan. Susan Kennedy, and I'm not sure if we're related to this, Susan. Hey, Susan. <laughs> I really enjoyed watching. Got some really good tips. And that was on the... Double piping. Take a guess which video that was on, Dad. I don't know. Oh, you know. No, I don't. You talk about it every week. What? The 1860s, Joe. Oh, okay. <laughs> so she's talking about the tip about the double piping. Which well, she said, I really enjoyed watching some really good tips. All right, Susan. Um, so that's a good example. Um, you know, I go back, I keep going back to the negative comment about not, you know, being sometimes incomplete. 
it, it's the tips. You're going to have to watch a few videos maybe to piece together. If you're working on a particular piece, I think the criticism was he was working on a piece similar to what I had up there showing something else on, and he was frustrated because he couldn't find what he needed. But I think he could, uh, that person could, it sounds like Susan's got the key to this, is that she searches through and, you know, going to other YouTube videos that I've done, and she can, I know it's cumbersome, but at least I think that you can piece together. This is what I'm hearing from people. I'm astounded by this, really, yeah. that people can piece together, you know, A to Z on, on a particular chair that they're working on exactly. by looking at we're multiple not, videos. We're no way forcing people to enroll in our classes. You know, no. It's not possible to no. get all this information for free yeah. and do everything for free. We think that, we, you, I, know, I know, I hear from people, they say that they're doing, they're doing this, that they're, which is astounding to me, really. The, the, problem, the main problem you have with that is, is the, a piece isn't here in the shop long enough. That's right. So, you know, you, you, you're we're using pieces in the video that are for customers that yeah. have to be done in a certain amount of time. Because we so have, even if we wanted to, yeah. it's just kind of tough to do. I mean, the only way we could do that, like, at, on YouTube, is to is to have a patron say, okay, here's, here's a million dollars to open up a shop and just do YouTube videos A to Z. I mean, the fact is, we, we have customers that are waiting for the project who are kind enough in most cases. And I think in every case, when we ask them, they're, they're actually thrilled that their sofa was used on, on the YouTube. We had one there. Remember the one, the, the biggest sofa that ever I've seen, Patrick? Yeah. And you had it up in space. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, and, Anno's here right now. He w would have loved to have seen a full A to Z with that. That would have been awesome, but it was just... You know, you had that thing in and out. I was, I was even surprised how quickly it was left the shop. Imagine that, Patrick, <laughs> how many buttons there were in that and everything else and how big it was. And yeah. I just, you know, I just, I think uh, what happened was Jimmy, once in a while, will bring me a cappuccino with a lot of caffeine. Is he still watching, by the way? I have no idea. And a, lot of ca a lot of caffeine, <laughs> a lot of caffeine I had that day to get that done and also to deliver it. Not bad, huh, Patrick? Yeah. Patrick, so what happened to the sofa? You didn't even know. <laughs> Okay, we got another question. This is a um, previously asked question. Okay. Um, Philip says, never knew this was a thing. Amazing stuff how things were done in old school. Love human driving ingenu ingenuity. The art of spitting time. You, you, know, you know, it's funny. I, I reflect a lot of times on my early days and and we honestly, I was in a shop in the 80s, and we had never heard of compressed air, if you can believe it. I mean, pneumatic was around for a while. I think mechanics, Patrick, were using pneumatic tools, I think, in the 50s. I, I Don't quote me on that. You guys can Google it and find out the history of pneumatic. But in this particular shop, I was surrounded by older gentlemen, and we were all spitting tacks, and I was... We were <laughs> it, wouldn't, we down? it wouldn't go so good today with what's going on. I don't, what, would, what would we do, Patrick? We couldn't wear masks and be spitting tacks. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> but, but that's what we, you can imagine. There were, there were about one, two, three. There were, there were like three senior master upholsters, and these guys were like in their 70s and 80s. There was a stitcher who was a, who was a master seamstress. There was uh, people stripping furniture. I was kind of like at that point, maybe in the journeyman, early journeyman um, area, and we had pick people picking up and delivering. The shop had customers coming. It was a very, very busy, active place, and everybody was spitting these tacks, you know, putting the, the hammer in their mouth. They can hold it, <laughs> dropping it. <laughs> but the, we were so good at this. I mean, we were like this fast and you know see my hand how I'm holding my hand out like this that was for balance if you can't have your hand down here and, and, and be fast you, you actually found your balance your hand was up like this and yes you have um, I won't say this was me I was able to put one size tack in my mouth at a time you put like a bunch of them in your cheek and you have enough maybe you know to do an inside arm or something but there were people that were able to put a three ounce uh, stack of tacks here, a 6 ounce and a 14 ounce. So they look like, you know, the chipmunks out, you know, collecting their nuts out in the yard, right? You know, that's what an upholster looked like in the old days. And, and they're whipping, whipping, whipping. And you're not going to believe this. You can believe it if you want. Lunchtime comes 
And one guy didn't even take the tax out of his oh. mouth. No. Oh, he could. He he is so talented yes. that he <laughs> could be helping. <laughs> he was so talented at the in knowing where his tax were at all time that he could actually eat. And then he's he's finished with the sandwich because we're working on our commission back then, you guys. It wasn't per hour. This guy just gobbled down, and then he went went right back to work. Can you believe that? No way. No, I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. And this is fella here, right? Uh, that I heard about when he passed away. He was he lived a good long time. Um, he was an upholsterer, and uh, he passed away. And the uh, medical examiner called the called the family and said, "Hey." What'd you do to this poor guy? What, what, what did he do for work? What, what, what's going on in that house over there? And they said, what do you mean? He says, we found, found this tack in, his, in, in between his lodger, in between his teeth. What are you doing to the poor guy? Oh, he's an upholsterer. He was an upholsterer in life. They, <laughs> don't worry about it. What do you think, Michaela? Do you believe that one? <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> true story. But anyhow, yeah, and you know, serious note, it was hard. I have to admit, it, it was... It was tough. It was a tough way to, you can imagine. You know, we have this, and then the, this, this thing, this is what saved my life pretty much, or it just changed my work, my career so much, the staple gun. I'm so thankful for this. Um, we found out from a young upholsterer came in, and, and uh, he was looking around the shop, and he said, where's your, where's your air gun? We don't have an air gun. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. And so he introduced us to, the, to, to this. And, and uh, life was much different in the shop after that, I'll tell you. But it was funny, the old timers, they, they had a, just like, I have a hard time with the computers, right Patrick? These guys, had, the worst, though. These guys had a hard time with, with loading the gun. They, the concept of loading the gun. Right? So what you have to do with the, you have the 80 pounds of pressure, right Jimmy? Jimmy, Jimmy, is he still watching? Yeah. Jimmy, 80 pounds of pressure. Uh -huh. So you take your sleeve, one-handed, and your, your, your index finger and your thumb, you pull the sleeve back, and then you put, you put, you put it on like so, right? So um, they couldn't do that. They, they were like, how do you, you couldn't even get the gun off, you know? And it was like a real, I, some of them never really learned how to do it. I had to do it for them as the younger person. So don't feel... Patrick, we all do it. You know, we all go through that. You have to show me things that I don't know right now, right? Yeah. With the computer. Say, Wait, you got to show me stuff too with the old stuff. So but what they didn't like is I'd come along. You know, they'd be using two hands. I'd come along and go. Right? <laughs> so I don't know. I'm, I'm glad we have the staple gun instead of the test. Next question. Uh, this is from Jimmy Scott. Another Jimmy. Another Jimmy. This is great info, thanks. Who knew it could be that easy with the right knowledge and experience? You gained another subscriber with this one. Beautiful. Those, those two stuffing a cushion cheaply and effectively. Beautiful. I think what I show on one, maybe uh, this one, is it was a back cushion that, that um, head down and head zippers, and it was a semi attached back, and the down that was in there was needing to be, they thought, replaced. Um, but the secret to that is it has a zipper, first of all, that you can add. It's the additive that you put in. So what I, what I recommend on that is to go to like a bed and bath and buy these inserts, these eight inserts for, for pillows, really, for throw pillows. If you can get a lumbar insert, that's even better because it's almost the shape of the inside back. But the thing about it is the down and feather. So as, a, as an additive, always remember this guy, no matter, you guys, no matter what you're adding to, as an additive, the, the, the down and feather, it, it meshes the best. And of course, it's lined. It meshes the best. That means that you don't see, like when you, a lot of people, if you've had experience trying to add Dacron to a cushion, it, 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 sometimes you're not successful because it, you can see the ridges and everything. It doesn't look that great. But the trick is with the down and feather. We love giving these little tips out with those little, and they're cheap too. It, it, it sounds expensive, but you know some of these big box stores have them for cheap, and you just add them, and you've enhanced the sofa. And of course, what we're doing now is we're finding that people. Are, uh, I think even Patrick had a complaint here about new furniture that was too firm, oh. and and um, people are, are finding out that their manufactured furniture isn't what they thought in the showroom. 
So with they're changing out their foam cushions, something like that we can do. Um, and you can do that too. Um, but you can change the whole comfort of a piece by adding adding the right materials, the right foam and down. So is there another question? Well, all I know is that really, really must, must not be good quality because we've been very busy lately with new yeah, cushions. Right, right. <laughs> uh, we I just had mentioned this cool comment on here. Ron says, Pneumatic Air Tools came around in the very early 60s as I sold the tools on a mobile tools vehicle. Maybe that was the kid who sold you the tool. No, it's not. <laughs> he said early 60s, huh? Yeah. Well, I want, what's his name? Ron. 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 You're my hero. You changed my whole life. If it wasn't he came for into you, your shop and do that. <laughs> if it wasn't for you and your industry, I would be swallowing tax for the law. I might not even be here, Patrick. Patrick, you might not be here because I would have been swallowing tax left and right, and that's not a pleasant. That's not pleasant at all. Let me tell you. So, um, yeah, Ron, thank you for that. Uh, that had to. Tidbit. Yeah, thank you, Ron. So, '60s. Yep. That makes sense. It took 25 years for this shop to catch up with the technology, Patrick. What would that be the equivalent of with the computer? Right? We'd be using what? A, a, an Apple. What, I don't what, know, but I just. It, what would we be using if it was a 25-year-old computer? What would it look like? Would it? Oh, it probably would have. We had the PC. We had a Windows. I remember. Windows yeah, but, 95. Remember that, Dad? <laughs> the only thing you played was a game on that. Yeah, well, solitaire. <laughs> that was it. Remember that? <laughs> but the point is, I guess you do have to keep up with technology. Even you know, we're finding out. You know, I, I do. We do an old trade, and I can speak for you guys out there. But we need to live. We're living in a fast-paced world. Even though we have an old trade, and the and the biggest innovation was in the '60s, <laughs> um, still, um, I think with the social media and everything, and the emailing and the texting and the uh, Facebook and everything else, you have to keep up with those things, right, Patrick? Yep. And all I know is we wouldn't be on here live right now if that was that, that's still right. using those old computers. And the older and and the more we go along, um, the older I get, the younger my customers get. So I, it's more of a case I have to keep up with them, right, Ben? But well, we have to keep up with them. They're fast-paced. So what's the next? Any other questions? Yes. Okay. This is from Sylvia. Hey, Sylvia. Would it be advisable to use cushion ease material around the foam to make insertion easier? Yeah, that's a good point. That was on our latest video for the custom tea cushion. Yeah, um, you know they used to do that, and the they used to use a film, a small plastic film, to do that. Um, manufacturers, that's a manufacturer's trip. I don't like that because you can actually hear it. You can actually, when you sit down, it sounds like you know that show everyone loves Raymond. The mother's sofa has plastic on it. It sounds like that. Patrick doesn't know that reference, right? No, I do. I used to oh, do you know that? Remember yeah. the plastic sofa in that? Yeah, I remember that. The plastic <laughs> slip covers? Please don't ask me to do plastic slip covers because I don't do them. But with that little film, you hear it, right? It's easier to slip the cushion for sure, but I don't like the after effects. Now, the problem with a muslin line cushion, um, unless you're doing slip covers, that's different. I'm just, I'm doing a slip cover, I'm doing some cushions that are slip cover now that have to be muslin line because the customer needs to keep bringing them in and out. That's, that's, but for upholstered cushions, upholstered cushions like this one, you just take this one down. I'm going to be replacing the foam in this. If it's done properly, it doesn't, it just has the Dacron, which we've shown on our videos, the Dacron, which understandably makes it more difficult to fill. And you've seen my demonstrations on how to fill cushions. And, and you know, this is a time when a big hand and having some hand strength really comes into play. If you don't have hand strength, I think you might have to come up with those other solutions. But the thing I don't like about a muslin on an upholstered piece is that what happens is um, the fabric tends to walk more because there's not this, this is a good buffer underneath the fabric. So what happens is the fabric stays stationary. So with the muslin lining, what happens is all of this a cushion. Have you guys seen twisted cushions? I'm gonna. I got one right here. I think. You 
you know, you've seen a cushion that gets really, well, can't really see it on this, but really gets twisted. That's probably because it's a muslin line cushion. So on an upholstered cushion, the, the proper is a, is a very good, um, th we're changing this out. This isn't a good foam. We're putting a 2.2 density mid-ultra mid foam, which is all we sell other than the top of the line stuff, the, the spring and down cushions. And then, and then the Dacron, and then we fill the cushion. Now, it is, Sylvia, it really is hot. To, and, and I'm going to warn you, you cannot have two people fill a cushion. So don't ask a friend, if you don't have the hand strength, don't ask a friend to help. But I'll show you how, taking a cushion out, now, because I can't break the zipper. I, I'm reusing this cover, we're just replacing the foam. It's just as tricky as putting it in. And that's the tricky part, you don't want to break the zipper. So what I'm going to do is, let's just make a flat surface here. What I'm going to do is reach in first. Um, I know I'm getting off subject a little bit with Sylvia. I hope I answered her question. So the, the, the answer is Dacron over a foam and try to do it yourself, fill it yourself. And, and um, I'm going to reverse the process now to show you. But what you want to do is you want to work your T, call that a T, out. That's out. And then you go to the other side. Try to do it evenly. And try to really concentrate on your zipper. You don't want to put too much pressure on your zipper. So I've got it almost halfway out. I'm going to reach in here. And this is the part that takes a little strength. I'm folding the fabric, I mean, and the foam. I'm folding it and then working the cushion out from there. There you go. That's it. Putting that back, same thing. You want to grab your foam. Sure your cushion is ready and I think Sylvia is alluding to the fact at how difficult this is so I worked in a shop once where we had a cushion stuff I believe it or not it was a chiropractor's dream because what you do is you put the cushion in the machine you closed it up and you cranked it up you made it really small and then you had to bend over lift your foot and there was a pedal and it was the bending over and and pushing the pedal down to force the cushion out that does all this work for you. Um, I don't know what happened to that machine, but I was glad to see it go the day. Whew. I think it just disappeared from the shop because so many of us were pulling our back out. It's, it's, it's such an odd maneuver. It didn't work so well. So what you have to do though, Sylvia, if you can, is fold this in half. Don't ask a friend because what happens is your friend's gonna try to open this up and break the zipper every time. But you have to do all this yourself. And you get it in as far as you can with the fold. Use your, look at, I'm even using my stomach to do this just to try to get it all the way in and then get that T in. And then push it this way. Take the pressure off the zipper. It's so important. And then I made it look easy. I know I'm making this look easy, you guys. You're going to have to experiment. What I would say is practice on cushions you don't care about. You know, old cushions or something to do that. Then you get it back, and then you put the fabric back. It's so important. You're, you're favoring the zip portion, right? You're pulling it back before you try to zip it up to make sure. You don't want to be zipping a cushion with it like this, and really a lot of pressure on it. So this should just zip right up. And there you go. Hey, Sylvia, got a, got a lesson right there on live TV. All right, the next question. Well, so before you do that, um, Daniel chimed in about the, the tools. Uh -huh. He said he used to use a billboard tacker. A you know what that is? A billboard tacker. So I don't think I know it. Oh, For years. A hand, a hand, a hand tacker. Those things are hard to work too. Because you know when you're doing with the hand tacker guys, right? I mean. Just, Daniel just revealed to me how strong he is. And I think he mentioned last week, didn't he, about the top thing? Yeah. He, he's strong. This guy's strong because you're duplicating the 80 pounds of pressure, pretty much, right? That the gun is doing for you. And that, you know, when you think about it, when you're hammering a nail in attack with the hammer, bang, 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 bang. If you if you really analyze it somehow, I'm not I'm not a scientist or an engineer, but I bet it has I bet it's about that 80, 70, 90 pound pressure range that it takes, right? 
Um, it's the same thing with this tool that he's using, but that takes tremendous hand strength. And if you're doing that all day long, Patrick, can you imagine? Right. Yeah, so big he, forearms. He's strong. <laughs> but uh, now he just made a funny follow-up to that. He said, people used to joke about, joke to me about that saying I was LARPing. I was what? I was fighting the foam all day. The uh, LARPing is like you know, foam weapons. Uh. He was like battling the foam. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you, I know what he's talking about. I'll tell you a little story, guys. It's kind of embarrassing, but I don't care. Um, I, m one of my early jobs. You, you got beat up by a piece of phone? No, I know what he's talking about, though. Um, I remember one of my earliest tasks, and you know, being the newbie, you're always given the worst jobs, and it was kind of like a test. It's kind of like basic training back then. Today, we're much more sensitive, right, Patrick? Yeah. We don't want to do this to people. We're not mean. We should ask Jimmy if that's true. <laughs> but I, I have to say, some of the tasks that I were assigned at particular times, especially, was seen to be rather cruel. So one day, uh, they said, okay, Kevin, you're going to learn how to stuff down cushions. And when you stuff, we used to stuff our own cushions, you know. And stuffing a down cushion is not as easy as it sounds. And, you know, you, you grab a, you have your casing that's been made by the stitcher, and you have the openings at each channel, maybe three or four channels. And each channel has to be stuffed with just the amount of, of down, just the amount. And I remember it was the hottest day of the year, no air conditioning, right? It was right before lunch. Uh, I usually walk down uh, to the corner, uh, you know, it's about three blocks away, Patrick, on a very busy, in a very busy area of Waltham. And I remember uh, I'm stuffing the cushions and the upholster would come over and say, nope, you put too much in, take out, take out. No, you took too much out, put it back in. And you know, it was, and you know, was he being mean? No, I think he was just trying to get me to learn. He was teaching me just the right amount to put in each channel. Okay, so this is about 11.30 and I'm, I, I am covered with, it's, I'm sweaty, Patrick. And I'm covered in feathers. I look like a chicken. <laughs> tarred and feathered. I, I was, <laughs> I, I'm feathered. I wasn't tarred. I was, I guess, sweat and feather. And then, then it was time to go to lunch. And Patrick, you wouldn't believe it happened to be a windy day. Uh, it, if you saw me walking down the street, all you saw was a chicken man with all the feathers around blowing off down the street. This stuff seems to happen, happen to you a lot. Well, I mean, this is what you have to do if you want to be a good upholsterer. You've got to stick in there, right, Patrick? guess so. You can't let things bother you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, those are good questions. Is there another question? Yeah, this next question is really good. Yeah? Okay. This is from Tiger Elephant. Tiger Elephant. Well done. That was close. I did my sister-in-law's granny's chair after having the confidence to do it with the help of your excellent videos. Of course, she bought the fabric a remnant because she liked it and when draped over the chair looked enough as she put it. I did manage, fingers crossed, to to do it without the piping, just scraps left, but got it done. Not a good feeling. Yeah. I Love mean, the videos and complimentary the commentary. Learning so much and during lockdown had time to do it. We'll be doing a course next year that might lead to to bring a master upholsterer if I want to take it that far. Thank you for sharing knowledge and wisdom of your 40 years and I'm going to keep watching. Oh, so great. Those are the comments we love. Right? Well, well, that's a YouTube comment from somebody that likes, that, that's been able to put things together and maybe had a chair that was just like that one that I, remember the fabric on that, Patrick, we just had enough. It was yeah, really yeah. nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, and it usually is, especially on an expensive fabric. But, you know, in all fairness, too, uh, you know, you're talking about learning styles. Everybody has different learning styles, right, Patrick? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and um, you know, we still are living on YouTube in a one-dimensional, right, Patrick? Yeah. Or is it two-dimensional? You're not able to go through the screen yet. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> says to me, it's two-dimensional. I don't know what they mean by that. I think it's one-dimensional. Well, maybe that's soon. You can teleport what? out of the screen into someone's living room or something. I don't know. <laughs> so, so if you're a person that needs... Uh, that type of learning, you know, three-dimensional or live learning, learning like the man Ed who commented, um, who wasn't too happy, that could be his learning style too. 
you know, that, that wasn't, uh, you know, that, that doesn't transfer very well sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know a little bit about this. Yeah, that's why we're trying, we're going to try this Zoom thing. Cause some people like that. They need to have you there because they have multiple follow-up questions. But there's no Zoom three-dimensional, all right, Patrick? <laughs> Not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's you funny. Would that, you probably wouldn't be, probably time to close the shop down and, uh, Something else. <laughs> you know what, what? You know what's funny? Full full circle, Patrick. In the old days, upholsters were Europe, mostly European. So in this country, if you're a Beacon Hill uh, homeowner and you've got the money, which a lot of back then did, they were all you know merchant marine and the merchant marines and their captains, sea captains. You know, we have the widow walks, and you could. I'm, I'm trying to draw this picture for you guys with the top of Beacon Hill with the widow walk and the very expensive home, and they needed to get things upholstered or to have furniture made. They would ship. They would have somebody from Europe come over and live in the house for months on on end. Patrick, well, can you imagine that? Or can you imagine having me in your house for two months? Well, I can imagine <laughs> it. Twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got another question there. But no, like that reminded me. Part of her comment was that you know. When she said she had to do, she did this during the whole virus. She had time to do this. Oh yeah. That's you know the fact cool. that. This, uh, the winter is coming up, and we don't know what's going to happen over the winter. Yeah. Like we want to give you guys something to do, so this is why we're going to be getting this Zoom thing going. And, uh, and I mentioned last week, Patrick does. I, I have sometimes impractical ideas for the technology, and I, I, I originally my idea was to have you know four big screen, flat screen TV set up on each wall, and I'm in the middle, and you guys are on that big, and you have a, you have the same screen at home. And we're interacting that way. It's almost like you're here, but but that's impossibly expensive, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't need that. Like I told you, he you does. One, all he needs one screen. He just needs one screen, you guys. How many can you get on one screen? Well, you said you. How many people did you want to have in the class? Well, Eight when people? I first started, and I was a young man. I had twelve women, uh, mostly women, in a class. Twelve. You can get twelve up there. Oh, I can't. Twelve, 12. little screens. You can That's <laughs> a lot of work. You don't understand. I couldn't do that. Maybe, maybe eight, six to eight. Yeah. You know. Well, we want to give you guys something to do this winter if you get bored. So that's what we're planning, right? There. You know, that would be super fun. I would, I would be up to that. I wonder if Jimmy would take a class like that. Oh, Jimmy would be here. That'd be the funny part. He'd be in the. He'd be your like uh, co uh, co anchor. <laughs> oh yeah, we could have Jimmy here doing all what he does and what he does best. Yeah. He could be my assistant, my Zoom assistant. And going back to what you said about people of their own styles, you know, the poll, most people were for the idea for the Zoom, but some also said they prefer what we do now. So whatever you'd like to do is fine. And so we're trying to give you as many options as possible. Well, that's all to you, you and Michaela, the ones that know this technology. The only thing we can't do is the in-person classes. We were doing that, but... Well, find a way to put me through the TV, Patrick, to send me <laughs> off to... Uh, Erica and, and Janine. That's what the Zoom would be for. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just get my hand through, Patrick. My hand. That's all we, they need. Maybe that's all they need. They could put the furniture in front of in front of the TV, and I'll just do what I need to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, the key is to have them do it themselves. That's the whole point, right? They don't need you to do the work for them. That's right. But a lot of times, you know, it's funny. Uh, that as a teacher of somebody, as a teacher of a trade like this. You're, t you're so tempted to jump in and just do it, um, but you can't do that. It's, it's the person that has to do that. So, so the Zoom classes, I think, will work, Patrick. So the next question. Uh, this is from Robert. Hey, Robert. Friday night, 9.45 p.m. CST, and just finished watching. We'll try to watch live next time. Is he watching now, Patrick? Uh, Robert? Probably not. Uh, Usually comment. Well, there's value even in the in the in the show afterwards, right, Patrick? Yeah, really, just like that question that he commented after, we'll yeah. use it the following week. And we appreciate it. Or that comment was our question. Right. And the next one. This is from Alexis. Ah, ten minutes of tap tap tapping. Uh, I really appreciate the thoroughness of this video, and I'm looking forward to seeing the next steps. Which one was that video? 
restoring a theater chair. Oh, that was cool. I like that. Good. That's an example of one of the pieces that we did have time to kind of do. And there was like 10 minutes of me just... Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's a thorough video. Right. Which I, I have to say, how many were like that, I'm not sure, but... There was that one. We had the, the sofa, that one sofa we yeah. did 20 parts for. That we was, did a lot of... Uh, 20 parts? Yeah, we had to, uh, it was a lot. Wow. <laughs> well, see, it was 20, but... You guys, you don't know the effort it takes. It's not like you're doing the piece without a, having a camera around you, having somebody filming you, having to, you have to stop. The customer comes in, you have to stop. I mean, there's so many... It, it takes so much longer to do something on video than it does... Um, and you're not just, you know, it's not just a video you just work at. You're giving tips along the way. That's, that's right. I'm stopping. I'm talking. I'm I mean, you've been setting up a camera here 24 hours surveillance having you work, but uh, I don't know if people that, would like to. <laughs> I don't think that would translate. I think they like the tips, though. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, somebody once said, you talk too much. Shut up. I said, well, just turn the volume down because I guess some people like the tips, right? Yeah. And I know there are channels out there. It's just somebody working on it. People do like, like you know, it's like watching people do art. Maybe that was Jimmy. Do you think he has different names on YouTube that he uses? I wouldn't put it past. No, <laughs> no he wouldn't. I don't think he has time for that. Is he still watching, by the way? I'm not sure. Uh, find out because we could talk about him if he's not watching. No, I'm just kidding. No, like this will be up later, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have another question? The last, the last one. The last one is last from one. Janine. Hey, Janine. Love watching a project whilst doing the Q and A. It's great. Oh. So she means she means because last time you worked on a project. And you know that being the last question is a good segue <laughs> to this. How much time do we have, Patrick? Well, uh, we're an hour in. Wow. But we had a lot of questions this week. That's okay. Let me let me just start taking this apart because we just want to look in here. And see what's going on with this. I'm really excited about this stickly. It's an uh, Jimmy said he heard that. Jimmy, Jimmy, don't worry. You put the earplugs in because we're <laughs> about to talk about you know. <laughs> Jimmy's a good sport. There's one thing about Jimmy. Good sport, isn't he, Patrick? He is. He takes all the all the verbal abuse. It isn't that much. He, he he dishes out a lot too. That's why. That's the only reason why I do it, Jimmy. Yeah. If you were a quiet guy, I wouldn't be doing any of this. Well, he, is, he, he can <laughs> hold his own against both of us. Sometimes he gets the father and son beating, though. <laughs> yeah, watch out next time, Jimmy. Come, uh, come armed. <laughs> With your hammer and your staple gun. And your 80 pounds <laughs> compressor. Now, I've taken this apart, you guys, and this obviously this first leather, that first layer, was put on by, you know, somebody that probably didn't have much experience because it was pretty much just slapped on. It did have a staple gun, but it was a hand staple gun. I could tell because the staples are a little thicker and they're not in that great. These are coming off really easy. So, this is a drop-in unit. I think we had a, a really style of upholstery that was interesting. I'll show you. Let's see. This might be the original Stickly cover, you guys, because of the. I recognize a certain aspect of the upholstery, which is, I'll show you in a minute. So this drops into the unit, and they used to take their pleats to the side like this, so that when you're looking at it in the front, there's no pleat work to be seen, and the, and the back is the same. So actually, that's the that's another layer. So let's let's look to see if that upholster copied the original the original stickly. That's not the original stickly. There's another layer underneath here. Whoa! I'm getting a lot of dust, man. Wow! Woohoo! I've never seen this much dust. This is crazy, you guys. Wow. Just bring a trash can over. Oh, God. Jimmy, you want to come in and help me with this? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jimmy, I got a job for you. Imagine he knocks on the door. <laughs> At least it's not coconut fiber. I brought it up. Oh, there you go. Did you have to bring up coconut fiber? <laughs> Come on. 
for those of you just watching, we had a real tragedy with Coconut 501 with Jimmy. It's too, it's too damaging. It's not get back. I, yeah, I don't want to bring back that no. memory. That was, that was, that, that, I'll never forget. Just watch the intro again, and you'll. I'll never forget those bags of Coconut Fiber. There were like a hundred of them that he brought in here, and they were all soggy and wet. It smelled like a coconut factory in here. Remember, Patrick? I couldn't get the smell out for two years. Uh, Jimmy said he struck a nerve. He said, <laughs> "There he goes with the comment." <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's interesting now? Let's just take. I want to try to take this layer off, and it's probably be a good time to stop. So somebody, you know, we struggle over the years, right, you guys? Somebody used thumbtacks on on this upholstery. They didn't have staples. This is from the other one. So we're down to the second layer, and they're thumbtacks. Wow. But I want to see if the person who did this, some of us can get very creative, even if we don't have any of knowledge, right? I wonder if they used the same pleat, pleat system that, that Stickley used. Let's see. They did. See that? See that pleats? This is the original now. I'm positive this is the original. So they take that pleats to the side, and the person who did this had the wherewithal to do the same thing. So that's cool. Good good home job. This was a better home job than the top layer of the Naga hide. But there you have it. I am in for some work here, you guys. Um, I, I'm gonna have to take tear this down to the right down to the frame and then rebuild, uh, re retying the tops. Uh, the good news on drop-in units is that it's pretty much done for you. It's not you don't have to do anything to the bottom, there's no webbing. But this requires a lot of work. So then maybe the next time you see me next week. I'll have one of these restored and I'll be able to show you. Patrick can remind me. Uh, but there you go. So, boy, time flies. We probably could do two hours of this if you guys could stand it. Uh, but I have fun doing them, obviously, and I'm glad. Thank you for the input. We had a great uh, bunch of people with some good questions today, right, Patrick? Yeah. So we're very grateful to all our supporters. And our YouTube, please keep subscribing. If that's all you do, that's fine with us. Uh, of course, the online classes and, and what we have to offer on the website, check that out too at broadwaypolsteryschool.com. But even if you don't, we appreciate all of you. So and, we'll uh, see all yearly subscribers, enjoy that new class. It's mm -hmm. some really cool stuff in there. You will be astounded at, at what Michelle does. Michelle does a, such a good job with that class. So we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. See you later, Jimmy. Next week now, bring your, bring your tools. <laughs>